This machine right here is a PCR machine, polymerase chain reaction. It's going through some self-checks right now in order to be activated um, and make sure that it can control the temperatures as we go through the three steps of PCR, which are step one, 95 degrees Celsius, which is nearly boiling, to unzip the DNA by heat. Step number two, we're going to anneal the primers. So class, you design some primers that usually bind around, say, 58, 60 degrees Celsius, something like that, which is about the temperature of the hottest water you can wash your hands in without burning them. The third step is 72 degrees, which allows TAC polymerase, Thermus aquaticus, heat-stable polymerase, to amplify the DNA that has been unzipped and had the primers bound. So let's look and see what inside the PCR machine looks like. There are many little holes for tubes that will contain 25 microliters each. These are 25 microliter tubes. <clears throat> we'll fill up this tube with water, polymerase, DNTPs, buffer. DNTPs are the A's, the T's, and the C's and G's that we make DNA out of our primers, and our template. So because we've been working with chick embryos, we have some chick embryo cDNAs, some um, tissue from chicks that is, uh, has their, the, um, had the RNA extracted and then converted into stable DNA form. So we can use that as our template for making copies using our primers. Each of these tubes will go in here. This has a heated lid so that the heat of the PCR machine will stop any evaporation from happening so that the liquid in the tube will continue to mix even if we, we heat the bottom, the base here, to boiling. So we'll put our tube in with our 25 microliters of mixture of enzyme and template and primers. And now let me show you how to find the protocol. If you look at the screen here, F1 is for a protocol library. So I'll push F1, and it gives us a list of uh, things that uh, Dr. Storer and Dr. Lowe and Dr. Leonardo and Dr. Ricozian and I have already programmed into the machine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to page down through these pages to find a, an appropriate PCR um, program that will run what we would like to do for our PCR primers for developmental biology. So I've got this one called RNC standard for my initials. I'll hit enter, and we would like to view what that protocol is. We could edit it, we could save it, uh, or we could just hit run if we already knew it was there. Let me view the protocol. Notice that it starts at 95 degrees for five minutes. This is to make sure that all the template DNA is unzipped and available for primers to bind. Then we'll start, and that will happen only once at the beginning of the PCR. Then we'll start going through our three cycles, our three temperatures. Temperature one, denaturing the DNA, 95 degrees for 30 seconds. Temperature number two, annealing the primer, 55 degrees for 30 seconds. And then temperature number three, 72 degrees, the optimal temperature for uh, TAC DNA polymerase to make new DNA strands, for three minutes. The timing here, usually these can both be very short, like 30 seconds or one minute. The timing for the 72 degree step needs to be as long as your target region that you want to amplify is. So if you only want 200 base pairs, you only need 30 seconds. If you only want 500 base pairs, you only need a minute. If you want 700 or 1000 base pairs, you need 2 minutes, 3 minutes, etc. The longer piece of DNA you're trying to copy, the more time you need on 72 degrees. So this would be a relatively long PCR product at 3 minutes. Maybe we're looking at 1,000 to 2,000 base pairs long. Notice this tells us how many times it will repeat these three temperatures. 40 times ensures us to get a product. If we want to make sure that we are um, comparing one gene to another uh, or one tissue to another with the same gene, we would want to make sure we did lower numbers of cycles and uh, could compare the, uh, the final result. 
Um, here we're just trying to make as many copies as we can. So we might reach the limits of how many copies can be made in a si single tube with 40 cycles. So this is not quantitative in any way. We're just looking, is the, uh, is the PCR working or is it not working? Do we get a product or do we need to design new primers? The final step for PCR is 72 degrees for somewhere between 5 and maybe 15 minutes for the, any of the fragments that have been copied that didn't get copied all the way to the end to a, be elongated, all so we give TAC polymerase some extra time to finish any stragglers. Then the PCR machine is clever enough that it can actually hold as a refrigerator. So even though it's a heat block that is heating to almost boiling for most of the steps that we are doing, at the end of the cycle when we've gone home for the night, it can turn itself into a refrigerator. Four degrees Celsius is the temperature of a refrigerator, and it will hold the uh, PCR tubes there. DNA is completely stable in at refrigerator temperature. So this is how we use a PCR machine. We put our tube in and we let the machine do all these cycles. It usually takes about three hours to complete.